Inside the Birds is back. What's going on, everybody? It's Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan. Are you guys stuffed like we are? At least I'm stuffed, Adam. I don't know what your Thanksgiving was like, but um, I ate a lot, and I am stuffed, but I'm ready to talk some football, some Eagles Packers. Did you have a good Thanksgiving? Yeah, I did. I, I actually, believe it or not, I play tennis at a, a tennis clinic on Thursday, and Thursday night had a great dinner with the wife and our dog. <laughs> had a great meal. We put some stuff on social media. So, so I'm sure, I know you were definitely with your family for that. So what did you do on Thanksgiving? Yeah, so uh, for those who don't know, if you haven't seen some of my Instagram pictures, I'm down in Clearwater Beach for the week with the family on a little family vacation. We did this a couple of years ago. We went to uh, Jamaica, Montego Bay for oh. Thanksgiving week. And we're like, you know what? This whole getting away down south thing is pretty good. Not cooking food is is pretty good. So we're uh, here in lovely Clearwater Beach. The weather hasn't been great. It's been in the mid to upper 70s, been a little bit overcast. But uh, we did spend Thursday, we did this cool like pirate ship uh, two-hour um, tour where you get on what looks like a pirate ship and all the cast is, it's for the kids. You know, they're dressed up like pirates. And they do treasure hunts. And the adults just sit there and drink beers and, and wine and uh, enjoy mm -hmm. the being on the seas. So it's been nice. It's been good and relaxing. Uh, and then we had a really nice, the hotel here uh, had a, a fantastic Thanksgiving feast. And man, you know what the funny thing is? I thought I wasn't going to eat. Usually when you go to like a feast like this, same thing when, when we were in Jamaica like five years ago, um, you wind up having only a little bit of turkey because it's Thanksgiving and then everything, like the seafood, all the other stuff is what you really look for. But the turkey was so good here mm. that uh, I actually wound up eating. It was so moist and tender, which is how <laughs> it's hard to get good turkey. So wow. I'm stuffed, man. Who I'm, knew? I'm, I'm stuffed. Yeah, who knew? Maybe it's the water, Clear Water Beach. <laughs> <laughs> Quite clear. <laughs> yeah, who knows? yeah, exactly. So, do you fly? In, I assume you flew into Tampa Airport. Yeah, we flew into Tampa. I have I've been to Clearwater once in my life, and we, my wife and I, only spent about a day here, day and a half, and then we got out down to drove to West Palm, where my mom lives. This is the first time I've spent expen extended time uh, on this side of the state and been in the Gulf. You know, obviously the water here is the Gulf of Mexico, not the uh, Atlantic. It's uh, it's a lot saltier. Um, it's usually warmer, but this week it's been very cold because the weather hasn't been great. But it's just it, the, the sand, Adam, here is so white. It's beautiful. Mm. It really is gorgeous. So so the weather you're experiencing, I, I know because they, they might get rain there. I know. So so for the game Sunday night, you know, I'm crazy with the weather. Oh, yeah. It The, the early forecast as, as a Friday morning here, mm -hmm. I always go hour by hour for everything I do in my life with weather. So it looks like. It may just stop right before the game, so which would be great. I, I can't that that Jacksonville game, like I love snow. Like I'll, I'll take snow any day of the year. I love that that Detroit game. Do you remember the? I'm sure you remember it. The the, the craziness of that Lions. Oh God, it's awesome. Yeah. Are oh. they? I'm sorry, I missed this. Are they calling for snow? No, 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 no. It's going to oh, rain all day. It's going to rain all day. Oh, okay. Most of the day, right. but it looks like it'll stop between like seven and eight thirty right now as we talk yeah. here Friday morning, but. Uh, that snow game in 2013, I've never seen this in my life. Mm -hmm. Snow is not on the forecast at all. It came in, mm -hmm. like, the press box, like, what the hell? I remember. I, I don't remember how cold it was. I can't remember if I was wearing a jacket or not. But we. the funniest thing was, I, I don't know if the lines brought snow, like, you know, the heavy parkas. I don't know if they had them. All right. And obviously, Shady McCoy had a great game. That was so much fun. I, I love the snow. I don't know about you, but that was a fun game. I do like watching games in the snow, uh, and that was a special, special game in Eagles history uh, just to watch that. It was really fun. I'm glad the uh, snow is not on the radar, however, for this weekend. Uh, that's fine with me, but rain, sleet, hail, snow, no matter what, you and I and Greg Cosell and Jason Avant will be at Rivers Casino Sunday night, 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. for Inside the Birds pregame live. It's going to be a great uh, episode. We'll have a lot of breakdown that goes beyond even what we do in this podcast and then, of course, the post-game show will have myself, Adam, and Trey Thomas, hopefully right around 1130, hopefully if it's a, a regulation game. So we'll get to do it right uh, as the game is over. And uh, that'll wrap up another great week of, of football and Eagles football. Um, let's uh, a, a reminder, everybody, if you're not a, a Patreon subscriber, we had one of our subscribers, Eddie Garcia, show up to our pregame show last week. He hung out with us at our watch party. Still a plenty of content to check out on the platform, including our latest interview with Chicago Bears head coach Mark Tressman, who was very candid. A lot of people have talked about how amazing that interview was because he really opened up to us about his success, his failures, his theories and philosophies as a head coach. And uh, they're all very unique. So check that out if you can. Become a subscriber by going to InsideTheBirds.com. I'm sorry, Patreon.com 
slash inside the birds that's patreon.com slash inside the birds and we we will be doing our uh monthly live stream ask idb live stream with our patreon subscribers next week so look forward to getting that done as well and adam as always does his uh weekly chat on discord with our patreon subscribers from 8 to 8 30 p.m all right um let's get to some pretty interesting news that's yeah. happened this week uh some injury related some personnel uh and staff related adam first one being that the uh, we, and we, it's funny because we were just talking about what the rules were about hiring certain people who got get fired, right? Because Frank Reich, people were asking us, could the Eagles bring in Frank Reich since he's been fired by the Colts as some type of uh, staff position? And um, we talked about how that happened with who the most recent one was Matt Patricia yes. in New England after he got fired as Lions coach. And then lo and behold, here we go with the Eagles, but not Frank Reich. <laughs> no, this is correct. So actually on Thursday, of course, I know I wasn't going to get an email about I wasn't going to get a response from our friends at the NFL office. But uh -huh. I emailed them. Um, so I saw my friend Tim McManus of ESPN.com put the story out that the Eagles were hiring Marcus Brady, the former offensive coordinator, though he didn't call the place. Reich did. Reich fired him. It's really a crazy story. So wait to hear what he's going to be. This is not quite the role I was expecting, but it's fascinating. So, so Marcus Brady's coming in. Uh, they hired him this week. They actually they interviewed him uh, earlier this week, and Sirianni has a good relationship with uh, with Brady because they worked together when Brady was the quarterback coach. In fact, I've heard Marcus Brady, and I know he got canned by Reich, mm -hmm. but he's been an up and comer. A lot of people thought he'd be an OC or maybe a head coach someday. So Reich fired him as his non play calling OC, and then strangely enough, Sirianni hires him. But here, according to McManus's story, here's. Here's what Brady's going to be doing. This is the, the and I'll, I'll we'll explain it. This does go on around the league. So Brady is working primarily with defensive coordinator Jonathan Gannon and his staff, offering perspective as an offensive coach on how he would attack the Eagles' defense. That's interesting. So teams have done this over there. It's not particularly it's a consultant. So you'll hear like a guy come in. Okay, he's going to be the uh, the defensive run game coordinator. Well, what he's doing is okay. He his job is to to figure out what they're trying to do to them from a run game standpoint or sometimes like raheem morris raheem morris went to the falcon staff uh as and it was like some sort of offensive assistant job i remember that that's right right and then he wound up coaching the receivers yes it, i and it, i can't remember the circumstances i just i remember being so fascinated by what why they were doing this and they want they wanted to get a they want to see his perspective as a defensive coach, but on offense. So this does happen, but the timing is fascinating. Uh, and so I, I just want to know what the if they've updated the rules because I know there were, I know some teams got sick and tired of teams doing this. Like mm -hmm. Josh McDaniels when he got fired, right, um, right. and then he 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 went to I think he actually went to the Rams, and then he went to uh, back to the Patriots, and the, a bunch of teams do this over the years. But good, good for the Eagles to do this. I think this is fascinating. They, and Gannon obviously knows him because uh, you know, Gannon, Gannon uh, worked with him, sure. I believe, uh, with the Colts. So he would probably know him. But I just I find this interesting. Why not? Why not try to fi figure out um, what an offensive coach sees? This is really smart. Yeah, it's a whole lot better having someone like that being your consultant than, say, taking your offensive line coach and making him your defensive coordinator uh which we've seen here in the city before or in the case of maybe the patriots you know taking your old defensive coordinator he gets fired and now you make him in charge of your offense which is i think what matt Patricia oh, has, been, has yeah. been doing it's not good so, no i yeah it is it's a good idea and it's really fascinating that he's able to get that job uh you know this at this point in the season and um it, it'll be one of those things you never really will know what kind of impact he's having True. because we're not going to hear from him but i think it's although we'll check into it we're definitely going to look into it, what impact it always had for sure Absolutely. All right. A couple of transactions. Uh, Auden Tate getting the uh, practice squad roster tango uh, deal as he gets released for the second time in two weeks. Um, that leaves the it's funny because there was a time where the Eagles had like a billion wide receivers right on the practice squad. And now they think they only have two. They have Greg Ward and Devin um, Allen, if you consider him. They don't. Wide receiver yeah, or they're really return. He's really a return special. Right. In fact, yeah. for the life of me, I don't know what would be wrong. What could, it's like if you're going to make this commitment to the kid, why don't you bring him up? The return game, I know Covey's been a little bit better in punt return, but why not give him a shot as a kickoff returner? I mean, Boston Scott did it. I mean, yeah. what, what's the harm? Come on, what's, 
It doesn't move me, but okay. <laughs> I right, get right here, but that's my point, though. It may not move you, but what's the worst that could happen? He can't be any worse than their kickoff return game. Come on. I, I, I suppose not. I, I suppose not. <laughs> you suppose not? It's terrible. I mean, I just I can't get past like the whole, like, he hasn't played football in a really long time. I and know. We're, you were probably not thinking about the potential downsides to it. Maybe it's ball security. Maybe it's vision. Maybe I could, but but you're right. It's it's not like it's an area that that can't be upgraded just yeah. by just by trust. even like a moderate amount of more of kick return. I get you. And he's exposed uh, on a straight line. But anyway, yeah. And now uh, offensive tackle uh, Jared Williams also got released from the practice squad um, IR. So I guess he was on the practice squad. He went on the practice squad IR. Now he's released from the IR, right? He's yeah. not going to go back to the practice squad. He's just no, done. no, he's from the practice squad IR, the rare practice squad IR. Uh, yeah. People used to make fun of this. It's like, well, the guy's on the practice squad. What could, how could he possibly get hurt? Well, you know, there are drills. He could get hurt. So Mayalata, Maddox, Jared Williams, and who else we got, we got hurt in practice? Oh, oh Andre, Andre Dillard. He Dillard, played yeah. In practice. Got a concussion also. Yeah, and he got he got hurt. Yeah. Yeah, um, for a team that's not known for practicing very hard and having all yeah. rest days and maintenance yeah. days built in, they sure get yeah. hurt a lot in practice. But the surprising transaction, this, I mean, came out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. I forget because I know he was with Seattle and Atlanta. Anthony Rush is back. Wasn't he with the Raiders at one point, too? I thought that right. was. Oh, yeah. Well, no, that's actually yeah. how they got him, if you recall. They, oh, they, right, right. Yeah. So, but yeah, he. you're right. He was with the Raiders. But, um, in fact, he had an unbelievable uh, preseason with the with the Raiders, maybe in twenty nineteen, maybe. Mm -hmm. But anyway, he uh, he's back in the practice squad now. They have two D tackles in the practice squad. He was last with the Eagles in September of twenty twenty. Peterson's last year, so yeah. How right. about that? How about that? He's back. Crazy. All right. Well, he's a big dude. He was like three forty, if I if I'm not mistaken, right? Big dude and long arms. Yeah. Big dude. He just he always struggled with his weight. We were told so that day. They just got concerned about it. He know he's aware of it. I remember that checking in at the time when we were working on uh, his background. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, you've got now this kid, and you've got Marvin Wilson. I know Cosell, Greg, Greg, uh, Greg told us during he was kind of miffed at why they didn't bring him back up. He he liked the tape a little bit better than they did, and that's why he's not back up on the active. There you go. All right. Uh, so that gives the Eagles a lot of beef here between their. Uh, they're 53 man and their practice squad now with, you know, Jordan Davis, who we'll see what happens with him when he's ready to come yep. back and Linville Joseph. And of course now uh, Marvin Williams and Anthony Rush, Wilson and Anthony Rush. Uh, let's talk about some injuries here. The Packers uh, have quite a few, some more severe than others. Obviously the big one is Aaron Rodgers and the right thumb fracture uh, that he's got. Now he's been playing through yeah. that, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Right? Yeah, Correct. Yeah, 100%. In fact, he was on the Pat McAfee show. I, heard, I, I really enjoyed listening to him on that show. Mm -hmm. So he finally, he more or less confirmed it because McAfee asked him if it was broken. And he said, oh, I've had worse injuries before. I've had it broken before. Mm -hmm. uh, he did not throw them. I don't know if you saw the Titans game. He did not throw it well. Mm -hmm. One of the many reasons why the Titans won that game rather handily in Lambeau is he just didn't throw it well. He didn't have, and he won't have this week, Romeo Dobbs with his high ankle sprain. Mm -hmm. uh, the big injuries are on defense, though. Javondre oh, yeah. Campbell's going to miss his four straight game. He, that's one of the reasons when we get into the matchups, you could run against them. Mm -hmm. He has revived his career since he was in Atlanta. He's a terrific football player. He's got a knee injury. This will be four straight. And they lost, lost for Sean Gary two weeks ago to a torn ACL. He's their best pass rusher, arguably. Yep. Definitely. And Eric Stokes, one of their starting corners, he's out for the season with knee ankle injuries. So we're getting into the matchups. I talked to Cosell on Wednesday, and Greg gave me some good background on what they've done to move the personnel around. An old friend, Russell Douglas, is playing into it. We'll, we'll get into him and into the matchups. It's it's one of the most remarkable stories, and I don't know if you remember this. He actually got the rare RFA tenor re reduction. They actually, when the Eagles tendered him as a restricted free agent, mm -hmm. they, they they reduced the tender, which like never happens. Like, like right. it rarely happens. Right. And that's how bad he was. And he he just he sucked here. I mean, what could I tell you? He was bad there. And, was this unbelievable? And they love him in, in Green Bay. Like, I, I don't know how this happens. I just don't He's know had some pretty happens. big game changing plays for them or momentum yeah. swiping plays for them. So I can Picks, imagine yeah. why they would like him. Yeah. Context is everything. He probably fits their defense a little bit better than so, there's no right here. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right. Eagles injuries are a little cause from concern, not nearly as bad as Green Bay's, only because Devontae Smith popped up on Thursday on the injury list with a knee. Now, we thought he hurt his knee. In the game, uh, in the in the past game against um, who was it now? Washington. He did. Oh, in the Washington game, right? Yes, he did. Right. 
Right. Was, but then he was, he was off, right? Wasn't he off of it by the final injury report last week? So, so what happened was, yeah, he technically he's still on it, but they didn't give him a game status designation, like you know, right. questionable, doubtful, or out. So what happened – so on Wednesday, because only had a walkthrough, he wasn't on it. Mm-hmm. After Thursday's practice, he was limited with, with a knee injury. I assume it's the same knee. Yeah. Uh, and then A.J. Brown didn't work on Thursday due to an illness, but he's expected to play. And then Josh Joe cannot get rid of this hamstring injury. Yeah. Not that he'd ever play on defense, but he does play on specials. Uh, he's still dealing with it. But that's it. You know, that's it. We'll, we'll keep an eye on the Devontae Smith stuff, what happens later today. Right. And they do play Sunday night, so they have to – this will be the last injury report later today. They have the short mm-hmm. practice, but – the, the big ones are the Packers, and, and they're going to apply when we go over the, the matchups in a minute here. They absolutely apply, and the Eagles have to take advantage, just like the Packers did. The Packers actually got pass-happy, shockingly, against uh, – excuse me, the Titans got pass-happy against the Packers last week, which is surprising. There you go. All right, as for Jordan Davis, by the way, this will be the fourth game that he misses. So I believe by Monday he'll they'll have the ability to – or by Wednesday, is it? They'll have the ability to activate him into the 21-day Tuesday. window? So, I'm sorry, uh, I, Tuesday. Yeah, too well. They technically could do it, money, but they're not. Are they playing? Well, okay. Some teams you technically can do it. It'll be the new week starts on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. They could designate him then. It doesn't really matter because he's if they designate him to return, that means he's going to practice on Wednesday, right? And they would have till Saturday at four p.m. Eastern to act in for the Titans game on that Sunday. But right. I'm so fascinated. You know, we we did it. We we appreciate the. If you haven't listened to it, we love breaking down the from our sources to what the tape looked like on uh, a Wednesday, very high traffic show. And um, the P and, and look, y'all watched it. it. Linville Joseph was a factor, absolutely a factor. And if they get Davis back for this Titans game, I cannot wait to see what the Titans do. Do they throw the ball more? They don't want to, but will they be more, more aggressive now? We'll see, but that's the Titans mm-hmm. game and the Packers are first up. Definitely. And by the way, this will be game three uh, of four for Avante Maddox, who was okay. on injured reserve. So he's got one more before he can potentially get back into, into the 21-day one, day window. Yeah. yeah, they do. All right. And, of course, Dallas Goddard, we know, will be out. This will be game number two for him on injured reserve. So still two more left for him. And, boy, do they need him back as well, uh, which segues pretty well into our, you know, uh, matchups here. It'll, we'll start with the Eagles offense against – the Packers defense. Before we get into that, we'll remind you to check out our friends at PHL Sports Nation. They're enhancing the fans' experience with their coverage of all Philadelphia sports teams for the fan, by the fan. That's their motto. So make sure you check them out at phlsportsnation.com and on Twitter at PHL Sports Nation. We'll pause real quick to hear another wor- uh, word from our other great friends, including our friends at Sky Motor Cars. And if you happen to stop into Sky Motor Cars in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam just sent you. You'll get a great deal. If you don't make it in, visit them at skymotorcars.com. All right, the Eagles offense versus this Packers defense. Now, we just told you. I mean, this is not the Packers. First of all, it's been an underperforming Packers defense for most of the year. No doubt some of that due to their offensive inefficiencies. But when you take out Devondre Campbell, when you take out Rashawn Gary, when you take out Eric Stokes, I mean, that's that's just adding and compounding their issue. Um, So they'll have to figure out a way to try to stop Jalen Hurts and the offense, which in itself, Adam has to figure out a way to move the ball with more efficiency and more fluidity without Dallas Goddard. Yeah, no doubt. They, the last two games, it just is not, I mean, it just has not been good enough. They're just not as explosive as you'd like. They need a, it's interesting because they're not throwing the ball as much. The Hurts' pass attempts are down. In fact, the last five games, He's not put it up over 28 times. It's, it's some of it's been bulk. They, they've been bulk controlled a little bit by the other team, which is something like they had not ha- had happened earlier this season. They just have not functioned mm-hmm. as well in offense. And obviously without Goddard, they're going to have to figure out another way. The, the the one thing you can do, and we'll start with Eagles offense. The, there's only one thing teams see, seem to be able to do fairly well is run against the Packers. With Campbell out with his knee injury, they play a 34 front, by the way, under, under – uh, Joe Barry, who's been around uh, Wade Phillips, and he's 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 been with Washington and the Rams, and um, they're a little bit of a finesse defense. They get knocked for that. They're incredibly talented, but they don't always play up to the level of the talent, and that's the knock around the league on their defense. But Kenny Clark is a terrific nose tackle, athletic nose tackle. John Reed is one of their down linemen who's always been a pass rushing D tackle wherever he's been. Uh, Preston Smith, you might remember him from Washington. 
Uh, so they've got some guys who can rush the passer. They have a decent front, but they're not a stout, like run stopping front. So you, you can run on them and I'll be interested to see what, what the Eagles do with, we know RPOs will be part of it, but the thing we talked about in our Wednesday show, I would like to see them do more pre-snap motion. They need to bring that back. Mm -hmm. To me, it's, it's the missing link for this offense right now. Find a different way, find another way to get moving because their offense simply was not good enough last week against the Colts. I know they've got a good front, the Colts, but that's no excuse. Yeah, and they they really got to get back to the drawing board. Look, they don't have Goddard. They can't. There's nothing they can do about that. That's in the past. You got to deal with who you have, and they got to do a better job with this personnel. Yeah, I would agree with you on that. By the way, I want to bring to light something really interesting that um, Packers coach Matt Lafleur said about Jalen Hurts, and it's probably it's something we've talked about, but not directly enough. Um, one of the, one of the flaws of Jalen Hurts' game last going back to last year. And Trey Thomas really did an excellent job of bringing this to light was what we would say is Jalen Hurts would bail the pocket quite early. And Trey Thomas brought to light to us that not only did he bail the pot pocket when the defense was sort of getting within reach of him, but even when, say, his own running back would cross in front of his face to pick up a blitz, just that presence of color would force Jalen to get a little itchy and get out of the pocket. He's been much better at that this year. I mean, we've talked all, all we have talked a lot about Jalen being more patient going through progressions. He's done an excellent job of that. And Matt LaFleur pointed out specifically, he used the word seeing color, that he is not a guy who um, starts to see color and run, whether it's defensive color or anything, so that he's been more more patient and more poised in the pocket. 100%. So, yep. Yeah, and that's that's a big credit yeah. to the game. But, but uh, nothing changed from the way Eagles do protection schemes. They still have their uh, – you'll see plenty of times where the running back crosses in front of Jalen Hurst's face to pick up an oncoming blitzer, maybe from, from the other side, whether it's the strong side of the weak side or usually the weak side and the back side. And, and uh, Jalen Hurts has still been able to keep his composure. So that's, that's a good thing. And uh, if Matt LaFleur is correct about that, which he is, then that's not great for Matt LaFleur's uh, defense and secondary. Mm -hmm. But I agree that, that there's still got to be a better rhythm and flow to what they're doing. I just wonder if, if there's coming off that last game against the Colts where Jack Stoll, obviously played the most amount of reps at tight end in Dallas Goddard's um, place. If there's not room to get Jack Stoll uh, more production, more, you know, make him the, the tight end screen work well for Goddard. I know St uh, Stoll isn't the same kind of athlete, yeah. but could you maybe get him, him involved the same way just to keep the defense honest? It's, you know, continue to run your offense through the tight end, which doesn't mean the ball has to go to him all the time, but you might run a screen around him. You might just, just kind of feature him a little bit more than one, catch for seven yards from the last game yeah in fact the what mark trustman said this to us when we when we did our our show with him he he had mentioned how he, he when he watched the eagles tape that they really didn't get the backs of the ball very much mm -hmm. he said mark mostly coached in the west coast, coast offense he coached charlie garner and he went through gosh adrian morrell and one of my favorite running backs of all time matt forte who was terrific oh, yeah. the lane. he was great yeah he did great under mark and so he pointed that out, and, I, I, and he asked, he goes, they, oh, norm, he did not watch all of their tape this year, but he watched enough to get a feel. I go, no, Coach, they they simply don't get the backs of the ball in the pass game. I don't know why. It, it You know, I know that Hurts is not quite like once like this, but Hurts wants to throw the football, which you love. Mm -hmm. But you, it's not about the checkdowns. You have to design this stuff for him, and they're not – and by the way, Boston Scott could catch the football. We've seen this. We know Gainwell did great in college with it. His hands mm -hmm. are pretty questionable. We know that in tw in 2019, Sanders was great. What did he have, around 50 catches, something like that? Yeah, he had a lot of catches first year, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know. that. you got to alleviate this this Goddard issue. You, you can't duplicate his size and his ability, but mm -hmm. you got to find different ways to get your playmakers to the football. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I know you brought up the idea of trying to see if you can get the ball to Calcaterra more, especially against certain zones where he can kind of run the crossers or sit down and, and give you that explosive element. Uh, the Green Bay defense, Adam, it's it's a it's hard to figure out. You're right. The teams uh, can run against them. Uh, they are low on the low end of rushing yards. But as a team, they're 14th in total yards allowed. So they're a very middle of the pack there. But there are some things that they do well. They're third – or I'm sorry, eighth, you know, top 10 in third down defense, uh, which is pretty good. And 13th in red zone, which isn't great but not terrible either. Yep. For all the – the, the talk of Green Bay just being there, and their record's awful. You would think that they'd be terrible in certain spots. They're not. They're just mediocre or just okay, but it sticks out to me that they've got a pretty good third-down defense. 
Now, I don't, yeah, know if that's, I don't know if it was higher. And then ever since they lost Rashawn Gary, if it's gotten worse. But uh, again, you know, they, they're, they were doing something right situationally. Tony Pollard got them for over 100 yards. He did very well. Mm-hmm. Jamal Williams did okay against them. Right. But Pollard had some big runs against them. Yeah, he did. But again, they now I know, as you mentioned, you know, they got all these guys out. But for whatever reason, they have not been the dominant defense that people were expecting. But uh, there is talent there now. Uh, on the back end, so here's what Cosell said. So what happens is now with Stokes out for the season, mm-hmm. old friend Rudy Ford, oh, who boy. was one of the fastest special teams players in the league for uh, for a while, he signed a big free agent deal. The Eagles weren't going to pay him. What Houston? I think I think it was Houston or Jacksonville mm-hmm. uh, paid him. But what happened was is that now what they're doing. So Russell Douglas, believe it or not, was their slot corner, which mm-hmm. I find hard to believe, but because you never because he's long. Six mm-hmm. feet, but he, he was their slot. Now he's playing on the outside. And what they're doing is they're taking Rudy – no, Rudy Ford. So so what happens is Darnell Savage is now their nickel nickel corner. Okay. He's a safety. And Rudy Ford is is playing safety for Savage in nickel. So to me, you gotta, you you got to go after this matchup. Rudy Ford you have to target. Mm-hmm. Savage is not super comfortable. Uh, they had some issues last week in coverage against the Titans of all of, of all teams. That probably was I th- not only well they did a good job against uh, Henry, but it it was very surprising that they, that uh, the Titans were so aggressive throwing the football. They're just if you've watched them at all, they're they're just not like that. And Romeo Dobbs got them repeatedly. In fact, Robert Woods got them for a thirty-two yard pass. Uh, Burks got them on the fifty-one yarder late in the game. I don't know why they threw it when they're up by ten with two minutes left, but. So there are some plays to be had in the passing game against this Packers defense. Yeah, and by the way, we should talk about this. Jair Alexander, I watched a Green Bay game earlier this year and noticed that they he, he um, stuck to the number one receiver in that game. I don't know that if they do that every time they play a game or just against certain they wide play receivers. Sides. We'll ask Greg, but I think they play sides. Okay, well, which usually means you just stay on your side. But there was right. a game where he trailed. So okay. it might have been – it might have been against Justin Jefferson. Uh, was that the that was the first game of the year, wasn't it? Um, Vikings Packers. Oh yeah, in fact, that's when that's when Christian Watson dropped the seventy five yarder. Right, right. So we'll have to see. We'll we'll, we'll find out a little bit more uh, on that. But I have a feeling AJ Brown's going to have a big game uh, against this Packers secondary. We'll see. As long as you they know, get the protection. I wonder. And we'll ask Avant this when you because he he said Andy didn't. I asked him this question. You might, you might remember like three or four weeks ago. I asked him this because I just distinctly remember they didn't always do well sometimes when the advantages were strong. He did say that Andy didn't always go after, like it may show on tape that, okay, this guy's struggling, but he didn't always do it. Right. But the 17 team, those coaches and D. Filippo talked about it. They put a bullseye on anyone who was struggling at corner. Mm-hmm. The, the game, whoever Keep Tlaib was with then, it was either Chicago or Denver. I think it was Denver. They went after him repeatedly. And mm-hmm. they got to do this, this game. If they see – if. Yeah, Rudy Ford's out there. He doesn't, you know, he had, his guy has barely played safety. He's always been a special teamer. Now you're, he's out there playing a lot. You know what? Go after mm-hmm. this guy. Savage, if he's not comfortable uh, playing Nick inside, you know what? Go after him. I know, I know right. he's a safety. So I'll be interested to see what they do here. Yeah, definitely. Um, still thinking, you know, we keep waiting for that Devontae Smith like breakout since like he had against Washington. It just hasn't happened. Yeah. He's had some good games, but uh, I do sort of think this will be a, an A.J. Brown-style game, unless, of course, Jair is matched up. Jair is a good corner. I mean, A.J. Brown's a great receiver, too. So that will be fun. Actually, I, I think as a viewer, it will be pretty fun if we see yeah. Alexander versus uh, Brown for the entire night. Uh, as far as the offensive line, again, without Rashawn Gary, it's one less pass rusher. It's still a good good front. They're a strong, aggressive, stout front that Green Bay always seems to have. You know who must be playing well, Adam? Because we have not mentioned his name probably in, like, Eight weeks, but have we talked at all about Isaac Sayamalu? He's been I mean, okay. He yeah, be right. been, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah we, we, I actually have asked. Uh-huh. He's done well. Uh, my lot has had a couple snaps per game where you go, okay, what happened there? He, he hasn't been right. bad. He just had it. He's had one game. He might have had four bad snaps. One game he might have had two. Okay, he's young. He's still developing. He's still new to the game. We forget. Mm-hmm. Uh, so no, Sayamalu has been fine. He's been solid. He's been healthy. Remember, remember when he turned his foot? And we go, oh boy, this looks yes. bad. It yes. didn't that, that I remember seeing in the game, like, oh boy, that did not look good. And he wound up being fine. So we know with him, it's never been about talent. Once he got himself together in, in 2018, was it? 2018, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
he's kind no, of not looked yes, back. Yes, 2018. You're right. He 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 had a self confidence issue before that. We're told, and then he got himself together. He mm-hmm. just had a lot of injuries, but he's on a contract year, and we'll we'll see how he does. But uh, to me, there are plays to be had in this game, and I, to me, I would also. What, what do you think? Uh, to me, wouldn't you go a lot of eleven personnel in this game? And the Eagles did it last week, by the way, which is why I would. If I feel confident I can block them up, I would definitely go a lot of 11 personnel. Absolutely. Yeah, to me, that's got to happen. All right. Uh, let us talk about this Eagles defense against this Packers offense. I mean, the first, first the thing that really sticks out about the Green Bay offense, which has not been very good this year, uh, it's been okay. It just hasn't been great. Uh, the first thing that sticks out, other than the fact that Aaron Rodgers isn't having an MVP year, is that over the past two weeks, their rookie Christian Watson – has really come on. I mean, it's mm. five touchdown catches in the last two weeks after doing virtually nothing for the first eight or nine weeks. And Greg Cosell, yeah. yeah, Cosell told us about this. He said he, he, the, his his big concern about Watson was not his athleticism, not his speed, not his you know route run. It was just can he catch the ball consistently because he was not. Um, you he, he even went into great T-Dale, and this is back in March when he was doing the pre-draft stuff with us. That he just is either a double catcher or he just his hands aren't natural catch hands, and that seemed to be an issue from day one. Where, he, as you mentioned, he dropped the seventy-five yard right uh, in his bomb, hands, right in his hands. I mean, right in his hands. Oh. And then he went a couple of games there without getting a whole lot of snap. It's almost like I was wondering if he was even going to have a rookie year by by week yeah, three or he, four. And he, he's come he was on. hurt. Actually, he had a significant hamstring issue. That's right, which kind of limited him training camp in their off season. He has what they're called awkward hands. He's not a natural hands catcher. And yeah, he, he went, here's what happened. He, first of all, he's a really high character kid. Mm-hmm. He had an incredible senior bowl week. He put together what I called a Matt Jones senior bowl. Remember Matt Jones, the first round yes. pick of the Jaguars. who never should have been a first round pick, yep. but he, the group, Jack DeRay on their group, they were, they were enamored with him because he ran by everybody and it was six, five and he could run. But Christian Watson ran away. He just – see, here's the thing. You can't – they don't play man coverage. And uh, there's no blitzing or man coverage in the senior bowl. There's only zone. So mm-hmm. he just – he just ran away from everybody. Uh, and he, he got himself on the map. Though He's kind of raw. But, yeah, five, technically five touchdowns in four days because they, they played four games in, uh, in, you know, in less than a week. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it, we'll see. Now, Alan Lazard's a good player. He's physical. Funny story about Lazard, the Eagles actually tried to sign him off of uh, Jacksonville's practice squad as a tight end, and he mm-hmm. said no. He didn't want to play tight end. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now he's you know he's a good player, but he's been hurt a lot. He's had a shoulder problem. He'll play with it. And Randall Cobb came back last week and it played really well. He's He and Rodgers are best friends. At, uh, uh, Rodgers is like the godfather of his son, so they're mm-hmm. super close. And he he had a good game. He's a, he's a good slot corner, and this is where the Packers can make their money against Josiah Scott. He did, he's not played at a high enough level. Uh, he's just not totally comfortable. Maybe he'll be more comfortable the more he plays. Mm, okay, uh, that should yeah, that's a matchup that might concern some people there uh, with Josiah Scott because uh, Scott's been a little eh in the slot. Um, I want to talk about the run game for Green Bay. That's their their bread and butter. They obviously get a lot out of Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon. Um, and this Eagles run defense looked a lot better last week than the week before. Okay. Uh, but but now they're on tape with what they've got with their new personnel. This is to me like the biggest question of the game is can the Eagles once again be really stout against a pretty good rushing attack? And I, I think this might even be a more diversified rushing attack than what the Colts do with, with Jonathan Taylor. Oh, yeah, because although – I don't think Dylan scored since week one. He has not had quite the season they were expecting. But look, it's power and speed, and Jones mm-hmm. is incredible out of the backfield. Uh, that that you know, teams have not really crushed the Eagles out of the backfield. Surprisingly, I, it's I think the big thing is what you put on our show two years ago. T.J. Edwards has become so much more comfortable in the pass game. That's mm-hmm. why he's playing on he's playing on all three downs. Really, I mean, he's 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 not a two down linebacker. He's not. I mean, it, it's right. surprising, but he's been great. I'll be interested to see what they do because that's one playmaker, man. They, that's the thing. They have the ability to get some playmakers going here. It's, it's mm-hmm. going to be interesting to see what happens. Yep, no doubt about it. Um, how come Robert Tunyon is just – I know he's coming off the ACL injury, but I thought by now he'd be a bigger part of their offense. I mean, he had such a great rapport with Aaron Rodgers prior to that injury. And it's really – I don't know. I mean, we're seeing it with Michael Gallup too. Sometimes guys are slower than others. I mean, Godwin – with his ACL, but there have been guys come back from ACL and it's almost like 
didn't skip a beat. So it's just, I guess everybody's different in that regard. Yeah, they, their timing has been off. I, I'm shocked because, as you said, John Hanson, my friend from fantasyboys.com, says, since Tunyon corrected his name, <laughs> everyone was calling Bobby Tunyon. Right. And No, Tanyan, Tanyan, Tanyan. It's Tanyan is the real, uh-huh. real pronunciation. We Everyone was calling him Tanyan. He said he sucks since then. <laughs> <laughs> So funny, it is, but it is true though. Like his numbers have steadily gone down, unfortunately, the ACL. But yeah, they uh, they they have some offensive talent. There's no doubt. Now both tackles, okay, have had ACL injuries. Mm-hmm. Bakhtiari has been dealing with this issue for two years now. Jenkins, the right tackle who could play guard if you need him to, he had the ACL last year. John Runyon Jr. by the way is starting at guard. Mm-hmm. Um, so they they've. Rogers is four and one lifetime against the Eagles. He he, the thing that's beaten him all. They've always beaten him. The Green Bay has because of the quick release. So that's what I find fascinating. They have not faced a quarterback like this. I know he's been struggling, but he's Aaron Rodgers, and he could throw the ball quickly. I'll be Mm -hmm. interested to see what the approach is here to kind of try to slow him down. Mm, Definitely. Well, by the way, what's more fascinating, that Aaron Rodgers is not anywhere near the MVP discussion or that Mercedes Lewis is still playing oh in the NFL and, and, and playing like not just, you know, one Locking snap. Tight end. Yeah. I mean, he, I remember him from the senior ball of 2006. Oh my He's God. 38 years old. In fact, he was a super athletic tight end come out of UCLA mm-hmm. tall guy. And he became, as we've seen with Daniel Graham for you old timers out there, you might remember him from a from a university of Colorado, a first round pick of the Patriots maybe. Mm-hmm. He was a really good college tight end. He became a blocking tight end. And you know what? If you could be a wide tight end, which means in line, teams will tell you it's next to impossible to find guys like this. Mm-hmm. That's why he's still playing. And he, oh, six. Oh, six. Crazy. Well, good for him. I like to see guys play 15, yeah, yeah. 16 years. Sure. Awesome. Um, last thing on the Packers. Let's talk about their offensive line. Uh, it's pretty good on the left side with David Bakhtiari, left tackle, left guard, Elton Jenkins, who has played, I think, every single – actually played the- – He's right tackle now. He's playing. Oh, right he's right tackle now. He was. Yeah, he's healthy. He's like, yeah. Well, yeah, when I say he's healthy, the Jose Okendo of the uh, offensive line. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh, oh gosh! Wait, wasn't he a shortstop for the uh, Mets? He played every single. No, Jose. You're thinking of Jose um, Reyes or or um, no? Jose Okendo played for the Cardinals and he Cardinals, played. Short, he yeah, played okay. all eight positions, and then one day they were getting brute battered up catcher. by someone, so he came in and pitched. Okay. Yeah, he had already been a catcher. Oh, did he? Uh, yeah, yeah. So he came in and pitched, and uh, that was it. He had played every single position. No, what I was saying a minute ago is, ba- ba- again, Bakhtiari and, and, and Jenkins had the ACL. So they're John Ryan and Drew's the, the guard, uh, is the right. right guard. Josh Myers is the center, is a decent player. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's they, – they, they, they're getting away with it. I mean, it's not great. Um, they, they've missed time. Bakhtiari's missed time this season. He's not quite right. Not quite right. Uh, right. I will be – because, as I said a minute ago, with, with Rodgers and his quick release, you could help a line. This is what Peyton Manning did. They're, they're, other than Jeff Satter, they never had a lot of talent. He just made them better than they were. Rodgers, mm-hmm. when he's playing great, makes their line better than they are because he gets rid of it so quickly. So to right. finish this off, I just – I'll be interested to see what the thought process here is to slow – to just to – look, he's seen everything in, 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 you know, in his career – and he knows this defense very well, the Fangio defense. So it's not like it'd be a surprise to him. And the tape shows what they're doing. Mm-hmm. But other than a couple plays again, well, a couple they, they had some issues in, against Washington. Not not a little bit against the Colts and weak armed Matt Ryan. But you know, overall the secondary has been so tremendous. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna I'll be interested to see what they do. Will they blitz them? Like, what's the game plan? And we'll see. Yes, yeah, so the one thing I think that the Eagles can take a break from. Uh, is and and I haven't seen it yet, but you know the last two teams they played, both the Colts and Washington, put their best receivers in the slot a few times to get a mismatch there. Whether yeah. it was Terry McLaurin or whether it was Michael Pittman, uh, I don't think you'll see that from Christian Watson. We'll see. Maybe maybe they'll borrow some concepts. I think they're just still trying to get Christian comfortable with being an outside receiver. Uh, their slot receiver is is a veteran. Ah. It's it's Randall yeah. Cobb, but he's not. Like he's not on the McLaurin pal. He's he's not a, no. he's going to catch like a five or six yard pass. So no, he uh, not, he's not worried about him. Very right, but but he's a he'll move the play. He'll move the chains on third down. Mm-hmm. Lazard, he's not fast, but he'll ta- he, You could throw shot plays to him. But yep. folks, watch Rogers on Sunday night. Watch his right thumb. He did not throw the. the I, we knew about the thumb injury, but we didn't know it was fractured. This mm-hmm. gives context to how poorly he threw the football. Heck, hit it. You know, if I'm the Eagles, they they, they know his right thumb is bad. Hit him. Yep. Hit him. Hit him. 
Hit them early, hit them often. Okay, time to make our predictions. Um, I have sort of a boldish prediction about what I think people are going to get annoyed by. Uh, I will start with you, though. What, what do you? How do you see this game unfolding? And oh, I should you know do what we always do, which is give the uh, the line and the spread. What is? Uh, let me uh, check that out. Here in Florida, it's hard to access all the. Uh, it's either six and a half or seven, area. depending where you're looking. Yeah, six and a half. Okay. Yeah. But uh, let me see. This is the Sunday night game. Half sounds about fair for the Eagles against this team, I would think, being at home. Yeah, it's uh, it's still six and a half with a total of 46 and a half. I would like that. Yeah. All right. I'll go Packers 17, Eagles 23. 23 17. You, you love to do that. You love to give that Packers. People do people do that on the people do that on the uh on our 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 uh our YouTube comments. They love uh -huh. doing that because they picked up <laughs> yeah. but one of these days it actually will be that I'll actually pick the opponent. Maybe they're I'm I'm I look at their schedule. Actually, technically Dallas still has to play Washington, so they have a little bit harder schedule. It's very it's obviously mm -hmm. almost mirrors the Eagles. Right. But uh I just I, I'm curious to see if the I don't I don't know. Do you think the Eagles will be a, a favorite or a dog at Dallas? I think it depends on what happens between now and that game, but the way things are trending, probably a favorite, unless uh it looks like the Eagles aren't gonna play any of their their players. Oh so, right, with the circumstances. Uh, yep, it's true. Yeah. All right. So here's my my sort of prediction, what I see. I think Eagles fans are gonna be really upset with Jonathan Gannon for this game. Uh oh. Because Watson has the kind of speed, and Lazard has that, as you mentioned. It's not speed. It's he's a tall, big. He makes plays downfield. Yeah. And we know that this defensive coordinator does everything he possibly can to get beat for to to prevent getting beat over the top. So I think you're going to see a lot of soft coverage. I think mm -hmm. even when they play one safety deep, it's going to be really deep. And I think there's going to be a lot of yards to be gained on the Eagles in that intermediary level. That's going to make people mad. You know why? Because now that you've got Joseph mm -hmm. and Sue and the, t the two vets. Yeah, he'll go back to quarters. Yeah, because here's what happened. If you play single high, this is what Rodgers was talking about with Matt, Pat McAfee. Is like if you either you play too deep, and he's, he's a lot of the Fangio defense, or mm -hmm. if you play single high and you have that safety in the box, you know, you, you then you'll throw on it. But if you have the two deep safeties, you run on it. Mm -hmm. And that's – that's probably because you know they. This was the defense last year. We're not giving. They're not throwing it over our heads. They're not. Right. We, we'll let them run all day. Okay. No. What they were doing is they were throwing in front of you, not over your heads, and you were, you were getting a high percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, it, well, look, with Joseph, they're probably you might want to invite the run a little bit. Sure, sure. I, yeah. I if I'm the if I'm Gannon. Sure, please run. Please come out running. Sure. I, I, if I'm the Eagles, I would love them to do that, and I'll take my chances because after that terrible first series. Seven for 49 for Jonathan Taylor. Boy, did they really do a great job. Only, wow, they gave him, they, they, they really did well after that. So you wonder if there'll be more carryover. We will find out. I'm well, sorry. I say I say Packers 26, Eagles 20. Whoa. I do. Wow. Why, why do you think the Packers will beat them? Um, I just think the Eagles are, are really struggling to figure things out. I know it's just one game without Dallas Goddard, and I think the – I still get scared of Aaron Rodgers Sunday night. I, th I think, you know, they have two good running backs. They have a good running game. It's one of their best things. I still think you can run against the Eagles. One game uh, doesn't prove that you can't. And, uh, again, those two guys I think are going to put the, uh, the fear of God in Jonathan Gannon. He's going to play a lot of soft coverage, and uh -oh. they're going to exploit it. it but it's really, right, that I just think the, it's really that I think the Eagles' offense, though, is not going to be as prolific as it's been. Oh, oh there's no doubt. Uh, although there's some matchups that could favor them. Well. I'm just fascinated before we get out of here to see if the offensive coaches could find something to get the thing going, mm -hmm. just to get their offense going because it's they're, they're not a hard watch. Like they they through, throughout the game against the Colts, they had some good plays, but overall they're just not nearly as consistent as they were when they were rolling. Right. So we will see if they can get it going. We shall. We'll see if I change my mind between now and the. Uh, oh, you can't. Nope, you no, no, I'm not going. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I wouldn't do that. All right. Again, hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. We will be back to preview the game 5 p.m. on Sunday night. Myself, Adam, Jason Avant, Greg Cosell on the Inside the Birds YouTube platform and our other social media platforms. 
want to thank everybody for tuning in because as always we thank you for flying with us inside the bird